done historically whenever I dive down, you know, since it is just two-ish months. There's a fucking fly up here. Whoa, holy shit, there's a ton of flies. What the hell is going on here? I'll deal with that later. But, uh, what the hell was I about to say? Yeah, so historically, whenever I diet down, uh, what I'll always do post-morning cardio is a cold shower or if I've got access, a cold bath. You know, you say ice bath and look, the water's not 32 degrees. I'm talking a little bit more like a, uh, like a 55 kind of whatever for a couple of minutes. <gasps> but yeah, so after morning cardio today, Try doing a, uh, a cold shower. That bitch is fucking cold. I, um, you can go hard on a set and you, know, you feel kind of tough, but a you know, little, um, little challenge. You know, tomorrow morning, jump out of bed, brush your teeth, walk into the shower and turn that thing on to as cold as it goes and sit in there until you can, you know, stop. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't even want to say hyperventilate, but if you've ever gotten into, you know, seriously cold water or, you know, done ice bath, done a really cold shower, you kind of know that it, oh, it's such a weird sensation too. It literally just fucking like takes your breath away right in the beginning. Like, <laughs> it's as if, I mean, I'm sitting there, you know, I turn it on, get underneath of it and just having it over my fucking back and my shoulders and everything. For like the first minute, I'm just trying to breathe manually to actually get deep enough breaths to keep sitting there. Uh, so, in terms of, let's just say, testing your, you know, your mental toughness, that's a pretty solid test. Especially if nobody's fucking watching, too. Right? So, you, I mean, I'm sure you're thinking about it now. Could I, could I do a really cold shower tomorrow morning? Would I wimp out and turn the hot water on <laughs> it's a uh, it's very tempting of course but another reason which I mean it makes sense to me I guess it might I mean it's not gonna be insanely um, fucking what's the word I'm thinking of uh, it's not gonna be an insane game changer I don't think but in my mind when I'm dieting down your body kind of has a couple of pathways of energy expenditure, which I will explain. You know, just physically being active is going to spend calories. Moving around, be it lifting weights, sitting and pedaling a cardio bike for 30 minutes, you know, just doing stuff. You're going to burn what I would sort of describe as like a physical calorie. But you know, your body is not very efficient. A lot of the energy that you're, you know, your whole body is using every day, it's just pumping out heat you know so in my mind daily cardio or morning cardio combined with caffeine you know improved lipolysis it's gonna make a I mean just by having a uh, you know a stimulant it's gonna make body fat oxidize a little bit easier if that's the correct terminology not that that's gonna change calories in calories out or anything but you know you get what I'm saying and then in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I just did this cardio, fasted, unfasted, and whatever. That's, you know, X amount of calories burned. I go until the machine says 300, but it's, I mean, it's kind of an arbitrary number. In my mind, I like doing 30 minutes where I kind of start sweating at about 15. And by 30, you know, if I'm just wearing a shirt, it should be pretty wet. Just kind of fucking all over. You know, you know if you've broken a sweat or not. Um, and then... In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so now I want to take it one step further. So by way of getting into a fucking ice bath or taking a cold shower, that's going to, I mean, it's physically going to sap heat out of your body. So I'm not even doing it for what, you know, people may consider like the benefits of cold showers or ice baths or whatever else. Really, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm sapping away heat. My body's going to have to heat itself up. And the only way it's going to be able to do that is by using more fucking energy, you know? So, 
that's kind of why I like it. But also, whenever I'm dieting down, I feel a little bit like I'm just twiddling my thumbs, you know? Because I still train, you know, the lifting part, I still go hard, get a good pump, everything else. But, oh my dude, these two flies are fucking killing me right now. I think I must, I left my window open a while. That was probably, damn. Just fucking, but, uh, yeah, so whenever I diet down, and I'm not, I mean, the act of burning body fat, apart from, you know, getting into a diet so you're, you're actually eating in a deficit, it's kind of passive, you know. I'm, I'm not actively eating foods which are going to make me burn fat. I'm just not eating as much. So I've got more time. So I think in my mind, maybe subconsciously, it's making me feel like I need to put more effort in. Because usually I'm putting a lot of effort into actually eating meals because that is sort of an all-day aspect of fucking muscle growth if you're in a bulking phase. So that's sort of why I like adding the, uh, the cold exposure in the mornings. I haven't done it the last two weeks. Today was the first day because uh, I've, I've been thinking about it, but I've, I've kind of been a little bit of a wimp because it is fucking hard. And the first time that you'll ever do it is pretty much the most uncomfortable because tomorrow, when I get in the shower, turn it as cold as it goes and get in, I've already got that kind of experience, you know, I'm getting into the zone of doing it. When somebody does ice baths every day in the fucking morning, that's their routine, they don't have a problem jumping into it. Sure, it's still a little bit uncomfortable, but they do get used to the exposure, you know, and they get used to the feeling. It doesn't feel like they're fucking dying. So, that's a, that's a little bit of something there. Because... If someone can jump into an ice bath for 10 minutes or however many minutes, but they've been doing it for months, it's not really a problem for them. You know, I've gone through periods of time where I was doing ice baths really consistently, and like, sure, it's still uncomfortable. I am kind of like shivering a little bit, but you get used to it. So for a complete novice to jump into a cold tub or whatever else and really kind of suffer through it, that's that's got a little bit more merit in a way, at least in my mind for that specific, you know, moment. But that's all I'm really trying to say. Try a cold shower, see if you can, see if you can manage it. But plan now is legs, 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 and I think that I want to go about it a slightly different way than I have been. Instead of all hamstrings and then all quads. Well, I, actually, I'm not sure what I want to do. Because you know, I've done workouts where I do all hamstrings, then all quads. I've done quads only. Uh, I've done hamstrings only. I mean, that's those didn't count as leg days. I'm just saying those are workouts which have happened. And I've done ones where I went back and forth between hamstrings and quads, be it like hamstring curls back, you know, back and forth with leg extensions or squats or machine press or sissy squats or you know, whatever else. Mm. And kind of my main gripe with going back and forth is I do kind of feel like I lose some of my fucking pump. Um, I'm a little bit, well, not just me, but everybody. When you diet down and you're eating in a deficit, uh, keeping a muscle group pumped up when you're flat, aka, you know, not eating a fucking metric frick ton of food trying to watch my f-bombs it's you know, getting pumped up is a little bit stingier because you know, you're whether you know this or not your muscle fibers are not just like solid you know it's not just a solid substance called muscle you know it's just sort of long fucking tubes of myofibular uh tissue you know muscle tissue but these tubes themselves can gain size and lose size pretty fucking dramatically because, you know, like your stomach holds food after you eat a fucking big meal, all those calories, all those carbs, you know, fats, it's its own thing, but let's just talk about the carbs, they have to go somewhere. And your muscles can store carbs, you know, once you kind of eat foods, you know, breads or rice or sugars or anything that is 
a carbohydrate, it's going to be stored either in your muscles as glycogen, you know, kind of this sugar watery mix, which is really easy to, you know, break down for energy. You know, I'm talking, I'm talking ATP production, mitochondria level stuff. And then, you know, when you eat in excess, some of that is going to be stored as body fat, which is why when you bulk up and you're eating in a surplus, your muscles are going to be nice and big and full and you're going to feel strong and you're probably going to be able to have lifts, which numbers wise, you will have, you know, higher reps with the same weights. You'll be able to lift a little bit heavier. I mean, you're just more kind of efficient in a way. Or no, efficient might not be the right word. Um, let's, uh, what do I think of here? You're more, uh, well, you're just fucking full. But when you're dieted down, that kind of disappears. So this muscle glycogen, the sugar water, which is keeping your biceps big and full, has now shrunk down from making your bicep fibers like this big to now you know, this big. And even though that is only like a marginal change, uh, you know, there's going to be less fluids floating around my body. So by the time I get quads started, if I do three sets of leg extensions hard, and I can tell I'm on my way to really pumping up my legs, quads specifically, if I were to take like 10 minutes and do a couple sets of hamstrings, then quads are going to start to fade a little bit. And it's not like I believe that getting a pump means that you had a good workout. But if you had a good workout, you pretty much did get pretty pumped. You know, so uh, that's sort of my gripe there. Like, do I want to have more of an even workload of the workout? Do all hamstrings first and then all quads? Or should I get hamstrings done and then I can focus completely on quads? You know, it's kind of a it's kind of a this or that sort of situation. But I do do a little bit less hamstring volume because they do come into play in pressing a touch. And relative to my quads, my hamstrings aren't. Well, yeah, no, that's not true. My hamstrings and quads are pretty much... Uh, complementary to each other. They both need to grow. But right now, you know, since I'm dieting down, I'm not growing my hamstrings or my quads. All I'm doing is maintaining the size and strength that I've already built up while I try to peel off some body fat on the outside, which will kind of fucking, you know, reveal the musculature underneath. That's just the nature of fucking dieting. So, and we'll see. I'll spend a few more minutes thinking about it, but I'd say 75% chance I just do all hamstrings first, and then quads will be you know, portion two of the workout. And for me, hamstrings is not super hard to train. Like, I really don't have a problem getting a hamstring pump. Even if I were to work out right in the morning without having you know, without having a lot of food in me either, or maybe I'm a little bit extra dehydrated. Uh, for me, hamstrings are very reliable. As soon as I do a few sets of hamstring curls, even if I'm a little bit weaker than normal, after like five or six, my hamstrings are pretty much so tight that my knee doesn't even want to straighten completely. Because if you can kind of imagine the anatomy of your leg is like my arm, you know, my hamstring is the bicep. So once it gets really pumped up, it doesn't want to straighten anymore. If you, if you see what I'm saying there. But, yeah, hamstrings has never been too hard for me to, to pump up. Whereas quads is a muscle for me which is a little bit more finicky. You know, it's a little more touchy. Quads are a high-maintenance muscle. If I had really shit sleep, I can have a decent arm day. Let's say for whatever reason, probably irresponsibility or traveling or whatever, I got zero sleep one night. I could still probably get a pretty good arm pump in. You know, I might be a little more tired, but I could still do it. But quads? Oof, no chance, man. Quads on a really poorly prepared lift is compromised. To the point where, like, if I, um, if I was going to lift and I could tell I'm really in kind of a rough spot, maybe, uh, maybe I'm, like, kind of sick. Not sick enough to skip, but, like, I can tell I'm a little weakened. Uh, 
if I think that it would be better to just skip the gym altogether, that's what I would do. But if I was like that, eh, I'd probably just substitute quads with something else and save quads for next uh, for the next day. Can I put it on a one day delay and do like maybe just calves or forearms or shoulders or you know whatever. So that's where uh, those are kind of the things that are bouncing around in my head when I think about my uh, my leg training specifically. And when I say this, like, oh, which one do I like better? Doing all hamstrings or doing all quads or going back and forth or maybe quads first and hamstrings at the end? Uh, that's not for me to decide to tell you. you know, everything that I've said so far is only related to me based on my personal experience and, you know, my given circumstances of size, you know, years training, my own, like, muscle insertions and genetics and fucking different sort of uh, you know, pros or cons to my build. That's where I think, you know, lifters who do lean towards the side of making real, consistent progress, they're pretty in tune with their shit. You know, they know if they're a fucking driver, they can feel like, oh, my left tire is a little, it's a little flat. I can feel it because it's, well, I'm pulling a little. You know, like you kind of have a, a sense for how things are going for you. And then, by that logic, you should be able to make minute adjustments to your training and kind of optimize it towards you know the gains to put it a little more simply you're like a fucking you're a gains seeking missile right way far off in the distance is a target which is called gains and if i could put it a little more simply it's just fucking you know muscle growth so it's up to you to propel yourself towards that end goal so, you know, you do a specific routine for a while, and as long as you stick to it and do it consistently, then you can use it as a pretty solid, let's just say, uh, set of variables, which you can base your outcome off of. So if, you were, if you've been training a certain way for six months, and you've made legit gains, you're bigger, you're stronger, looks like it's working, man. You probably don't have too much need to completely flip your training upside down. But if you can tell, okay, I've been doing this for six months. I've, I've been tracking my weight. I can see a pretty big gain, but these last three months, I haven't really gained anything. I've been the same strength. Actually, I've been feeling a little bit weaker some days, stuff like that. That's your cue to say, okay, something is wrong. Something is off. I need to, uh, I need to look back at my training and my dieting and my just daily routines and habits and whatever else and find out what's out of whack. And then, being a responsible lifter, which you are, you should make a quality change and then stick to it after a certain amount of time, see if it did anything. You know, if after the next three months, let's say you had a three month plateau, then you change something, be it you start eating more food, you try to get more rest, you added your cardio, you, uh, you try to, you know, take your sets a little bit more intensely. You can tell this last month your training's been kind of off. Uh, maybe something in just your daily life is kind of messing with you. you know, these things are pretty much everything you can kind of follow the trail of to how it's going to affect you. And in a lifting context, the same thing is fucking true. So if after the next three months you can tell that after you made a specific change you saw results from it, then look at that, man. That was a good fucking change. Now, if you tried to change something up and nothing happened, then you still learned, like, okay, that didn't really work. Now we try something else. Right? It's fucking basic. You've got a, uh, you've got a four-number combination. you got a four-number combination lock that you're trying to get through. So you try a certain combination. If it works, you're good. If it doesn't work, try something else. And I don't think lifting is going to take as long to optimize as it would to sit there and crack a lock like that. That would probably take fucking, I mean, thousands of attempts, depending on how many numbers there were. But I hope you kind of get the idea that I'm, uh, that I'm proposing. You know, I don't think it's in your best interest to start looking up YouTube videos on the best workout of 2024 
I think it's going to be a much, but I mean, there is a little bit of a down payment. It's going to take you more thought and time to kind of uncover a routine that gives you results for your specific body and genetics and everything else. But to, uh, to have the mindset that you want to find out what works for you, that's going to, let's just say that's going to be a better situation. But I can already feel my face is tingling. Let's get ready for legs in whatever variety of exercise selections I choose. All right, nothing fancy. Think some heavy hamstring curls laying. Should be perfect start. Few more just like that. One more, and then I think drop the weight. Okay. Okay. A little lighter for the next one. There we go. So this set will look fucking different. No more this as much weight as I can do craziness. This one's gonna be much more controlled. Now, of course, those sets that I just did were still fucking effective, but there are different ways to skin this cat. So instead of just throwing the weight around to failure, the beginning of this set will look a little different. I'm gonna pause at the bottom in the stretch position for maybe not a whole second, but certainly a noticeable moment rather than just bouncing straight out of the hole. Do that as many as I can with a reasonable range of motion. And once I can't really get a good rep without being kind of nasty with it, I will burn out with some partials. But if this is a good one, I might just call hamstrings here. And then hamstrings will only have taken me fucking like 20 minutes. I mean, I wasn't lying when I told you hamstrings. Let's just say I can hit hamstrings reasonably effectively. Like I'm not even really sweating that bad yet. But after quads, this uh, this shirt's gonna be two tone. But let's uh, let's get this potentially last set started. Let's move on. I think with that, judging based off of pump and general fatigue, hams complete. Let's start some leg extensions. So these will serve two purposes. One, I can do a good set of leg extensions. It fatigues my quads, 
pumps them up. I mean, the two fucking factors I'm aiming for. With a god, a, a god, not a god amount of tension, but a good amount of tension. You know, I'm not just sitting here with a 20 pound dumbbell. I'm doing some work quad wise. But leg extensions for me first also kind of add to get me warmed up for pressing. Like if I were to jump straight into a heavy hack squat or a barbell squat or anything, it's not like I've got bad knees, but around here is going to be a bit more tender if I really just try to jump into, you know, heavy weight. Because, I don't know, like I can do warm ups, I can sit on a hack squat and do warm up reps, but it's not the same activation. Like before I do chest, I still do tricep pushdowns, even if they're just light, because it's just a kind of a better movement to warm up my elbows. If I were to just grab a bench and start benching as the warm up, my elbows won't get much work until they're really fucking firing on like the last rep of pressing. And if they're not warmed up for that, we can make them a little more tender. But regardless of reasoning, these are gonna feel good. So let's get some leg, single leg leg extension started and go from there. Weak leg first, so left quad. And one more notch. Okay, I'm not. let's make it alternating set. more weight for the next one. Let's do a double leg set next. Fuck. I think I have an idea. So kind of a fucking reverse drop set. So instead of like a typical, you know, well, if you think of a superset or like a drop set like this, you usually do the heavier weight first, then drop to lighter weight. But I kind of want to try something in reverse in a sense. So when I do really heavy weight, I miss out on that hard squeeze on top. Like I don't get to hold it and completely flex my quads. I have much more tension on them, but 
I mean, I know for a fact when I do sets of triceps, which is pretty much the arm equivalent of quads, not to say they're the same kind of muscle, but I like a heavy push down, tons of tension, but I also like, like light extensions or this part of the rep. I mean, I'm just kind of going through the motion of it. Like when I'm doing a light single arm push down, this part up here is not the hard part. Where I make it hard is where I try to squeeze as hard as I fucking can to the point where I want my arm to bend backwards like a fucking, uh, like an exorcist scene. So I'm thinking lightweight. I'm talking like only 60 pounds or 80 pounds. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe a little more, 100 pounds, whatever. Seriously hold at the top for like 10 reps or five reps or however many I deem is about right. And then drop to the full stack and burn out in more of a nasty way. So kind of combining a, uh, kind of a Jekyll and Hyde situation here. You know, kind of uh, nice and respectful for the first part, but as soon as nighttime rolls around, it gets fucking nuts. Uh, if you can appreciate my, um, I was about to say Edgar Allan Poe reference, but that doesn't sound right. No. Well, whoever wrote that story. Okay. That was sweet. I'm recreating that set. Oh shit. <clears throat> Time for either Smith Machine or Machine Hack Squats to be determined after a drink of fucking water. I'm, uh, I'm going pretty heavy on this one. I actually got a fucking, like, you know, you can get amped up for a set of curls, but squats or pressing movements especially, same thing with bench, but it's not the same as with fucking quads. I really do need to get into a zone. Like, I can do a set of you know, calf raises or lateral raises pretty fucking hard without too much, let's just say hype, but really heavy pressing. I don't know if it's just because it takes so much out of you. I really do want to fucking focus for this one.
Come on. I think the stack on this machine is too much for me. But that was a really good set back. That's enough. Fuck. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think I know what I want to finish with. But first I need to fucking sit in on ah. Okay. After those two sets of fucking machine squats, quads are near done. So as a finisher, I really like the feeling of those light leg extensions. So, I'm thinking 110 pounds, really hold it at the top until I can't get complete extension anymore, anymore, and even then do a few partials. Then jump up, hold onto these two machines for stability and minor assistance as I do these sissy squats. And then just take sissy squats to failure and then we can pose down. Ugh. <sighs> <sighs> 
down after a minute or two of breath catching all right this uh this lighting might be a little too freaky but has that ever really been a problem too freaky i mean i feel like if i stand for anything it's go hard get big and honestly those two have a subsection which is just fucking be freaky man either size wise intensity wise and everything in between. So, let's see how these legs are looking. Let's, uh, actually, let's scoot this shoulder press back a little. That would be even better. Yeah, perfect. Oh, yeah. Now we're right in the sweet spot. So, barbell squats will return. And even Smith, well, I'm a little torn. Because when it comes to pressing movements, when I diet down, I want to really take everything out of the equation but my quads. Smith machine squats do it. That is pretty good. But the machine hack right there is honestly my favorite leg pressing machine. I don't fucking probably all of them. Now, bulking is a little different. I don't mind the overall fatigue that I'm going to feel in my lower back and my glutes from body weight, or no, from, uh, from barbell squats. Just because I'm, it's like, I can hit my quads way harder with a barbell squat than I could on that, uh, on that hack. But the hack has one advantage that the barbell squat doesn't, and that is fucking quad isolation. My lower back and my glutes do not come into fucking play. It's all quads, basically. So that's what makes me want to only do more isolation movements for quads when I diet down because anything that's going to hit my whole fucking glutes, hamstrings, lower back too much, I mean, it's just too fucking fatiguing or at least more fatiguing than I would care to uh, indulge in. So you tell me, how, uh, how are we looking here? Fuck, this lighting might actually be a little too freaky. Oh, wait, no, I got an idea. See if I point over here a little. Oh, there we go. Yeah, now we're good. So I'm trying to smush my hamstring up against itself to make it look fucking bigger. Yeah, I mean, this line, I wanna make this as defined as fucking possible because that's the separation between quad and hamstring on the back. But starting to see some roundness. You know, the real open guys who I just saw at, uh, at the Detroit Pro, when they did this kind of side, uh, you know, this sort of side shot right here, their hamstring was fucking twice the size hanging off the back of their leg. So a lot of room to fucking grow. But that's still a set of quads. Pumped up a little bit less defined than peak, but we're still seeing some veins pop up, especially on the left quad. Let me try to hold my breath and get some out on the right. Oh, not as much. For me, left quad is the veinier one. Right quad is a little bit less... Uh, Let's just say vascular, but even pumped, still seeing some pretty solid muscle. Well, not, word, not definition, separation. So the longer we diet down, should start to see some coolness here. There might even be a hint of it on the left quad. So what I'm going to try to do is flex the left quad as hard as fucking possible. And in doing so, I'm hoping to reveal some feathering, some cross striations on my quad. Because as your muscles develop in size, they will also develop in, not density, but almost texture. You know, think of it like a fucking sapling. A baby tree, 
the the bark is very smooth but when you look at a big ass fucking oak the bark is fucking rough and jagged and everything else so kind of an interesting comparison but same thing applies to your fucking muscles man mainly i'd say chest quads triceps but those little striations will appear in time so let's see if i can get some Yeah, well, maybe not. Another thing to take into account is the fact that when your quads are pumped up, they lose some fucking definition. Just because, you know, it's the nature of being so inflated, right? If you had a, uh, I can't make any more of these weird comparisons. Quads are, legs are done, let's get in the car. Okay. So legs pumped, but needs to be discussed. You know, we got to bring up the elephant in the room, the Jared Feather mogging incident. No, so uh, last weekend, you know, hostile everybody. We were at Detroit for the uh, for the Detroit Pro Show, and in the process of going to the hostile private gym to hit a, an arm day with Ian and Samson. We drove to Mike Isertal's Renaissance Periodization Compound to, uh, well, everybody kind of just hit their own lift. I mean, there's 10 fucking, oh, Jesus, these fucking flies again. How do they get in here? Well, there's kind of 10 of us <laughs> and not, you know, just random lifters. You know, I'm talking Samson Dada, Ian Villier, Sephirosi, of course, Mike and Jared and me, and, uh, me and uh, me and Hunter were doing legs, so we didn't really lift together. Everybody was kind of doing their own thing, uh, but you know, me, Jared, and Mike all got a pose down. And I tell you what, look, it's not like I thought they were small before, but you don't know how big someone is till you really see them in person. And you got to think, I feel kind of big at a, you know a dieted down two forty five, but oh my goodness, look, I've seen some big ass dudes shoulders wise, but. Oh my goodness. Jared, if you're watching this, you may as well be wearing a fucking set of football shoulder pads at all times. Now, in my defense, they had a chest pump and I had a leg pump. So my upper body wasn't in, you know, as pumped up of a form. But no, that's the way to do it. Because you gotta remember, you're not, re I mean, look, it's probably not the best mentality to feel like you're in competition with everyone else. But if you know that you want to get to a certain level and there are people out in the fucking world who are relative to that end goal ahead of you, you know, it will fucking hype you up. So, oh my goodness. Now it's making it even harder for me to diet down because I'm just itching to get back on fucking the weight gain train. But give it time. Give it time. I've got enough patience and understanding to know that this next month and a half, two months of dieting down will let me bulk even harder on the next one. And the bar has been raised. The gauntlet has been thrown down. 260 morning weight was achieved on the last bulk. So, but being a 260 pounder brother, it's not going to cut it. We got to hit 270. And, oh my goodness. I remember talking about hitting 300 pounds back when I was a fucking 180 pounder, just as a joke. But it becomes more and more of a potentially tangible reality. Now, of course, that's fucking, that's enhanced. That's not 300 pounds natural. Um, I'm sorry if I'm busting your bubble, but... I don't think that's going to happen, at least not with relatively low body fat, you know, but I feel like that's not, I mean, that should be pretty obvious. You know, if anybody hasn't gotten to that conclusion on their own from watching these videos, then yeesh, but no, for real, there is much more gains to be had in my future, which just gets me even more excited as a fucking 
it started on him, you know? I, uh, I have an easier time, let's just in totality, dieting down than I do bulking up, just because naturally I do tend to be a little bit leaner, you know? And I've got a big appetite, I can eat. But after a few months of a steep, or even just a relatively solid calorie surplus, it does get pretty tricky for me to get food down. Whereas once I get into the groove of a calorie deficit, you know, it's not too hard to stick to. Plus, there is the real immediate fucking benefit of getting to see yourself super lean after, I mean, depending on how lean you were to start your bulk, only a few months. You know, if you're walking around with abs right now, and you're still a little bit on the softer side compared to being like super lean, it only takes like two months to really unveil the muscle that you've got underneath. But that is two months of actually being in a deficit. You know, just uh, just replacing your your Sprite with a Sprite Zero, even though that is a good start, you know, you just cut like 200 carbs, or not 200 carbs, like 200 calories out of your daily intake if you're, eating, if you're drinking a fucking Sprite a day, just a 12 ounce can. But that's not enough, you know. It does take consistent effort, or, you know, at least being consistently... Uh, routine in actually hitting a deficit to lose body fat over time. But getting back to what I was saying, man, there are some big dogs out there in the world and I cannot wait to catch them. <laughs> so until then, I do got to take a step back, not get too fired up and make sure I get this diet done. Not that it's a question. Of course, I'm still going to diet down because I know that before I can actually do another proper bulk, I need to kind of give my system a reset. You know, I got to take the batteries out, rub them together, and then put them back in. But, you know. One thing which I, I will admit I am feeling is the initial suckiness of starting a cut. Because when you're bulked up, you are fucking bigger than normal, right? When I'm eating fucking seven even only like 500 grams of carbs a day, I'm considerably larger. And I mean like, comparing side-by-side -side photos, I am considerably fucking larger whenever I'm really carved up. So these first two weeks of dieting down, you know, the body fat changes aren't insanely drastic. But, you know, I can tell when I have an arm pump, it is smaller. Just, I mean, I need to get a tape measure out next time I, uh, I have an arm day. But, my arms are legitimately shrunken down a little bit and deflated from all the muscle glycogen and everything else compared to when I'm fully bulked up. So if that's you, if you just started dieting down and you can tell you feel a little bit smaller, you know, your clothes are feeling just a touch baggier, look, do not be discouraged. Because that's just the price of the initial fucking phase of dieting. You know, after you can get through that for a couple of weeks, you will start to notice a little bit more fucking leanness. Right? You are going to be more, I mean, depending on how lean you get, potentially more vascular, maybe get some muscle separations and some chest striations and everything else if you're on the lower end of body fat. But even if, I, if you're on the higher end, if you're more of a, um, not to be disrespectful, but if you're kind of more of a linebacker kind of build, when you die down, you're going to notice pretty serious changes to the way you look. You know? Don't... Um, so this is one thing which may sound a little bit contrived for me to say, because I'm, I'm fucking massive, at least relative to the general population. You know, relative to the top 1% professional bodybuilders, that's a little bit of a different story. But minute changes to your physique, to your fucking body, when it comes to you know, muscle size, strength, the amount of body fat you have in your frame, making changes will always result in internal satisfaction. No matter where you are in terms of progress or size or experience or whatever, right? The happiness that you're gonna feel in your fucking mind, the dopamine response that you're gonna get from seeing a new bicep vein, you know, that jump from just beginner to there, it's gonna be the same level of satisfaction, more or less, than the first time you do a chest, you know, get a chest pump and get do a side, uh, like a side chest pose, and you start to see some chest striations and some fucking muscle fibers. You know, 
every minute change that you kind of develop, it's going to give you a little bit of a fucking, I mean, just a fucking feeling of satisfaction, you know? So same thing at even a smaller level, If I guess only if you're a nut about working out, but every time you have a good workout and you get a good pump, you're just going to fucking feel good about it. Whether you're a 300-pound Samson Dowda or if you're a 160-pound high school sophomore. So, you know, keep that in mind. Like, whenever I do an arm day with, I mean, not to just keep spamming his name, but, like, this last weekend, you know, me, Ian, and Ian's not even fucking an active competitor, but his arms are still absolutely insane. You know, every time I'm working out with these guys, it's not making me feel, you know, demasculated or demasculinized. It's not making me feel like a chump. But it is cool to see them, especially when they're fucking... Uh, I mean, look, if me and Samson were, like, superimposed onto each other, his arms, I, oh my goodness. If you cut Samson's arm off and my arm off and put him on a scale, it would not surprise me if his was twice as heavy as mine is. But, you know, I'm just saying it's cool to see. So, this could may potentially apply to you. If your gym is kind of, uh, kind of on the lower end, more let's just say targeted towards general fitness. You know, whenever I go to my grandparents' house down in Florida and I go to the YMCA that's close to their, uh, close to the condo, there's no freaks. Or if there are, it's very rare. You know, it's mainly just dudes trying to get a good workout, which more power to them. I'm not trying to say anything bad against that. But if you know that, you know, somewhere around where you live, even if it's a little bit further of a drive, like 30 minutes, maybe even 45 minutes, but you've got an actual bodybuilding gym with big-ass dudes who are really pushing it every time they come in, being surrounded by people like that, it's going to get you fucking excited, man. You know? As cool as social media is, because it lets, you know, it lets everyone pretty much see the top 0.01% of people in any field, which, you know, whether or not people take that as a good thing or a bad thing whatever but the fact that you can see a Larry Wheels on your phone whereas you know people back in the fucking even in the 50s or whatever pre like you know international television you'd only hear stories about like massive strongmen from you know the fucking Czech Republic or wherever else you don't just get to see that at the click of a button but sure you get to see it you know you may think like oh well you know I know I know what he looks like yeah sure he benches sick Seeing these guys in real life and knowing that it took them years upon years of consistent effort to get where they are now, right, regardless of the means, I don't know about you, but that fucking hypes me up. Because I'll hear, you know, you'll hear videos of, um, oh, fuck, was it Sean Ray? I, I can't remember. It's, it's kind of like a little motivational clip where guys like, I think it's Sean Ray, but don't, don't quote me. I'm kind of bad with names a little bit. But he's like, you know, it took me 10 years before I turned in, before anybody knew my name. Now, not that that's really the point. You know, I feel like I'm really just kind of motivated because I want to get huge. But this is a long-term endeavor. So if you can be satisfied with that, then making small steps of progress and having a proper bulk and, you know, dieting down so you can gains more weight again, or if you're a main gainer, you know, who gives a fuck what you do, as long as you're gaining muscle reasonably consistently over time, look, man, you should just kind of be, and I'm not saying this like an order, but I'm just saying this about me, like, I'm content being on that path, because I know that even in fucking 10 years time, I may not be packing on more muscle, right, this is not, this is not an infinite fucking muscle glitch, there is a, a peak definitely for me you know I'm not a there will eventually be a state where I say this is pretty fucking cool I don't think I need any more than this as crazy as that might sound but until then I know well, right now not that it's a problem but the challenge at hand is to actually build up that size which sure it, even though I can do it consistently it is not a passive action you know this does take actual What's the word I'm trying to think of? An actual routine and a couple of check marks every day which need to be hit to an order that 
or in order to uh, you know to maintain progress. But right now, the challenge at hand is pretty much just fucking size, you know, overall muscular growth. And then, secondary to that, like I was just talking about the quad striations, maybe um, I think I might have to get up or kind of uh, well, not get up in the morning, but do a little bit of a uh, kind of a morning unpumped pose down, just as kind of like a check in, because like with a quad pump those striations aren't really going to be coming out because my muscles are kind of really full of fluids. They're a little more tense against my skin, so those little striations aren't going to be so pronounced. But even little things like that, even if you stay the same size, as you work out over time, your muscles will begin to develop a slightly different look in what's typically referred to as muscle maturity. And even though I'm coming up on like six years of lifts, six years of pumping up, there's more to come. Size-wise, definition-wise, everything else-wise, and whether it's just because my mind is fucking wired, right or wrong, that gets me going. You know, that's what I want to see. So, yeah. I can't wait for this diet to be over. I want to start bulking up again. Fuck. Oh. I feel like a kid waiting for Christmas to come back around. So, plan now is go home, eat a do a little breakfast for dinner, have a bunch of egg whites, drink a ton of water. I did not bring a jug to that workout. I kept going back and forth between the water fountain and the uh, whatever sets I was doing, which with a leg pump was becoming a little bit of a hassle because uh, even just walking around, especially like one minute after that, like some of those sets of leg extensions and everything else, I was really starting to fucking uh, starting to feel it. But... I'd say give it another few weeks. We should start to look pretty, well, pretty striated. And then, once I'm, uh, once I'm at a point where I'm not even decently lean, but just like closer to fucking, let's see, what would you say? Closer to 240-ish, then we can go home. But I will see you next time. Or no, what am I saying? Then we can get back in the bulk. What am I talking about? Go home. So I will, uh, I'll see you next time.